Hello, I'm Christopher Jones from Bicycles Network Australia. This video accompanies our in-depth review of the Cyclic Fly 12 CE, the integrated bike light and camera, which fits on the front of your bike. You will see our in-depth review on bicycles.net.au, the link is in the description. And in this video we'll see examples of the Fly 12 CE in different weather conditions and also direct comparisons with the previous Fly 12. The first test footage is all filmed at the maximum resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 and is 60 frames per second. We see the first example with overcast weather. The clouds appear very, very bright as the camera adjusts and it means that the surroundings are quite dark. The quality is really, really good. The next example shows varying light conditions with sunlight and shadow. The camera likewise handles quite well. Darkness does get a little bit lost, but otherwise the it adapts quite well to the different light conditions. In the final example, we see perfect conditions, so it's sunny without direct sunlight and an extremely close pass um, that's within centimeters. So essentially I can, when I freeze frame, get a very, very clear vision of the number plate. In the next examples, we see direct comparisons of the new Fly 12 CE and the previous generation. The first is overcast weather, which we can see the previous model, Fly 12, dominating now. It's much brighter, but the image quality is not quite as good. So with the new model Fly 12 CE, the camera adjusts and everything becomes much, much darker. So although the quality is much better, the footage using the standard settings is quite dark and not as legible. In the next example, we can see direct sunlight. The, uh, the settings remain identical. So this is the previous generation Fly 12. You can see it's quite bright. The footage quality, as we'll see in a moment when the screen flips over, is not as good as a new one. However, the new Fly 12 CE renders everything much more darkly. In the following examples, we look at the high dynamic range and the electronic image stabilization features. As a reference, the standard footage is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, and we film this on cobblestones. Both of the settings, EIS and HDR, are only available in 30 frames per second. And in this example, we can see the jello effect, the shaking, and also the dark areas are lost. When we turn on electronic image stabilization, you can see that the footage becomes much smoother. And although the light isn't corrected, it's extremely watchable. When the high dynamic range is turned on, obviously I no longer am able to use the electronic image stabilization, but what you can see is that all the dark areas are lifted. The light is balanced and it means it's much easier to see dark areas, which for example is particularly important when identifying number plates. In the remaining footage, the preferred setting is the 1920 by 1080p, filmed at 30 frames per second, with the high dynamic range turned on. This was the preferred setting, and in this example we can see the forest, where all of the dark shadows and dark areas are all lifted, but also the bright areas are not overblown. Now, going downhill along the curves, at about 80 kilometers an hour, we can see that the dark areas are very, very uh, identifiable. When the cars pass, I'm able to stop and freeze frame and quite clearly recognize those number plates. So it's a very, very good setting, and I'd certainly recommend all Fly 12 CE owners turn on the HDR because it's going to give you a much better picture at the moment. In this final example, we see rapid light changes where I move from direct sunlight into shadow, and you can see how quickly the camera reacts and provides very, very clear footage with the HDR turned on. So if you'd like to talk more about cycling and these cameras, in the Australian Cycling Forum, we have a very active discussion um, on all manner of cycling topics. And otherwise, you can check out our Fly6 CE video, which also has a lot of test footage.